This week on ANN, Executive Secretary of the Seventh-day Adventist World Church, G.T. Ng, announces his retirement. Massive flooding impacts parts of Indonesia and Timor Leste. And members in Haiti are released after being kidnapped during a live worship service. These stories and more coming up. Thank you so much for joining us this week. First in the news, Executive Secretary of the Seventh-day Adventist Royal Church, G.T. Ng, announced last week that he would retire after nearly 50 years of ministry. Ng grew up in Singapore, where he occasionally attended church with his mother. When he was 18 years old, he felt an unmistakable call from God to enter into ministry. While in college, Ng met his wife, Ivy, and after graduation, the two headed to Cambodia to begin their married lives as missionaries. In Pudang Pen, Ning and Ivy studied the Cambodian language. They helped to meet the needs of refugees with clothing and rice, and they shared the gospel. When they arrived, there were almost no believers, but soon more than 30 people were worshiping with them each Sabbath. When Cambodia broke out in civil war, Ng and Ivy were forced to evacuate. They looked out their plane windows to see a city covered in black smoke. Two weeks later, the Khmer Rouge took control of Phnom Penh, and an estimated 2 million Cambodians were killed. Many of those who had worshipped with them perished during this brutal regime. Ng and Ivy moved to Malaysia to Thailand, to Singapore, where Ng became chaplain and health educator at Youngberg Memorial Adventist Hospital. After serving at the hospital for several years, he received his doctorate at Andrews University and taught for 11 years at the International Institute of Advanced Studies in the Philippines in the 1990s. The last three years, he served as the Dean of the Theological Seminary. In 2000, Ng was sent to Toronto, Canada as a delegate to the General Conference session, and there the nominating committee appointed him to be the Secretary of the Southern Asia Pacific Division. Ng remained secretary for the Southern Asia Pacific Division for six years before he accepted the call to be the GC Associate Secretary. During the 2010 General Conference session, he was elected as the Executive Secretary of the Seventh-day Adventist World Church. President of the Adventist World Church, Ted N.C. Wilson said, Pastor Ng has been an enormous blessing to God's worldwide church family. His constant focus on mission and his emphasis on Christian leadership have been appreciated greatly. His congenial and positive spirit will be missed. It has been a great privilege to work with him for the, these past years, and we wish him and his wife, Ivy, God's richest blessings in their continued witness for the Lord and his soon coming. As the ex executive secretary of the General Conference, Ng's role has consisted of three main functions, executive, administrative, and missional. These roles have included making major decisions, troubleshooting, peacemaking, and looking after minutes, policies, and agendas, and along with other leaders, promoting and strategizing world mission. Ng and Ivy have two children and three grandchildren. Ng said, life is an adventure. It's all God's doing, every step of the way. Adventure is full of surprises because you don't know what the next turn will bring to you. We have no clue. We do not plan our journey. We must never forget that God has a plan for each of us. We're not alone. God is caring for our future. There's nothing to worry about. There's a plan for you, and it's a perfect plan. Torrential rains pounded the eastern side of the Indonesian archipelago and the country of Timor Leste on Sunday, April 4, causing massive flooding and widespread destruction to lives and property. Rain began Friday, April 2nd, and gained strength until Sunday morning, turning major streets into rushing rivers. According to local government officials, nonstop heavy rains resulted in flash floods and landslides, killing more than 50 people. News agencies reported overflowing dams and rushing water, submerging households, and making rescue operations difficult. Rescuers fear more casualties as retrieval operations are ongoing. President of the Timor-Leste Mission, Raymond House, reported heavy damage to households in Dili. He said families in Dili are greatly affected by this calamity. The floods submerge their belongings, electrical services down, many homes are badly damaged, some were completely washed down by the rushing waters. 
Streets are covered in mud, some bridges are broken and are not passable. The mission house accommodated five families whose houses were badly damaged. The Adventist Development and Relief Agency, or ADRA, in Tomorrow Less, will conduct rapid needs assessment this week and will be a part of the coordinated assessment team organized by the Civil Protection of Tomorrow Less. Initial reports from local government units mentioned bedding and cooking equipment as the first needs of families in evacuation centers. ADRA will be providing food, water, bedding, and cooking stoves to evacuees in the worst affected area of Tassitolu. While the number of evacuees grows daily, government units remind everyone to observe social distancing and mask wearing to avoid a spike in COVID-19 infections in the country. The Seventh-day Adventist Church in the Southern Asia Pacific region is requesting prayers for everyone in Timor Leste and East Indonesia. Seventh-day Adventists in Haiti are celebrating the release of four church members who were kidnapped during a live online worship service on April 1. The members were taken from a studio next to an Adventist church in Dinkar, Carrefour, in Port-au-Prince. Local church elder, as well as the founder and director of the Adventist Gospel Creole Ministry, Figaro Gregor, said, We are full of joy and happiness because everyone is safe and sound. The four who were taken are members of that ministry. Members across the country anguished in prayer for nearly four nights. Gringer said, so many people were praying for this situation and we are so thankful for that and know that the best security comes from God. We do not believe in human power, but in the power of God. For now, Gringer said, the studio will be closed while they reevaluate re how to proceed and ensure the safety of all concerned. President of the Adventist Church in Haiti, Pierre Caporal, said the support and prayers of fellow leaders and church members in the Inter-America and around the world strengthened the faith of the church in Haiti. Members in Haiti spent the last three days in prayer vigils, worship programs, and prayer sessions on the radio, during online programs and throughout churches. The Inter-American Division Territory also joined in prayer sessions this weekend. President of the Adventist Church in Inter-America, of which Haiti is a part, Eli Henry said, once again, we have seen that being part of the great Adventist family is a blessing. We have seen evidence that God has been close to us and close to the affected families, and we praise him for that. The Adventist Development and Relief Agency, or ADRA, in North Mexico began assisting hundreds of emergency responders from the Nuevo León Civil Protection who have been risking their lives fighting forest fires in the Sierra Madre Oriental Mountains. For more than two weeks, fires have destroyed hundreds of homes, displaced more than 1,600 persons, and damaged more than 18,000 acres in the state of Guajilla and Nuevo León. ADRA has been delivering water and hydrating drinks, protein bars, personal hygiene items, instant soups, special shoes, clothes, water hoses, and water tanks to firefighters and emergency responders in the region. ADRA Director for North Mexico, David Maldonado said, our regional offices in the Northeast and Region Montana mobilized immediately after the fire started on March 13 to provide initial assistance to those fighting the fire and the hundreds evacuated in shelters farther away from ground zero. A collection center was established at the Maranatha Adventist Church and the adjacent community center in Coahuila, which was not damaged. Adger leaders and volunteers assessed affected areas and delivered tools like shovels, picks, and chainsaws to assist those in clearing debris. Adra Mexico began its initial assessment recently and is working on a special proposal to continue providing assistance on a larger scale. The Nuevo León Civil Protection estimates it may take more than one month to completely extinguish the fires, and Guajila's Environment Secretary warned it may take more than 50 years to recover the lost vegetation. First responders are working on the initial phase of containing the fires, explained Roberto Zambrano, Agile Coordinator in the Northeast region. Once that first phase is complete, the work will continue to ensure that the region is safe for evacuees to return home. The regional office has joined a group of 40 volunteers called Jeep Riders, Jeeperos, who have taken food and relief items close to the camps where the fire responders are. Several Adventist families lost their homes and dozens more were evacuated to shelters or relatives in nearby Monterrey and Montemorelos. Many families will remain in shelters indefinitely, and church leaders are waiting for the green light from local authorities to deliver food and basic supplies 
while they are displaced. For more information, visit facebook.com slash ADRAMEXICO. Adventist Risk Management Incorporated, or ARM, announced on April 1 the appointment of Karnik Dukmexian as interim president for both ARM and Gencon Insurance Company of Vermont. The appointment by the ARM Board of Directors came after President and CEO Tim Northorp submitted his resignation, which was effective immediately. The announcement was made to the ARM staff by Adventist World Church Treasurer Juan Prestal Busan, who is also chair of the ARM Board. Duke Mexien previously worked for the ARM for 12 years, including three years as claims counsel and nine years as vice president for underwriting claims and legal services. While serving as interim president, Duke Mexian will also continue in his current role as general counsel for the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Prestal Poussin expressed his appreciation for the many years of service Northrop has provided to ARM. A search committee formed to find a permanent replacement will be chaired by G. Alexander Bryant, president of the North American Division of Seventh-day Adventists and vice chair of the ARM and GICD boards. U.S. News and World Report has ranked Loma Linda University School of Public Health number 60 in the Discipline of Public Health in its annual ranking of top graduate schools. Dean of the Schools of Public Health for Loma Linda University Health, Helen Hoop Marshak, said, We are pleased that the quality of our school is recognized with this ranking and look forward to continuing to prepare our students to meet the public health challenges of tomorrow. As the COVID-19 pandemic shows us, preparing a strong public health workforce is vital to our collective future. The school, founded in 1964, offers 12 public health programs at the master's degree and doctorate levels. For more information, visit news.llu.edu. Coming up, Adventists in Brazil encourage frontline workers in a hospital in the capital of Brasilia. But up next, a Walla Walla University graduate student partners with Hope Channel on a new video series about Jesus. Why is there evil in the world? Are Christians hypocrites? Is the Bible a fairy tale? Does Jesus love everyone? Church doesn't feel relevant to my life. Is God even real? You have questions? Let's talk about it. I Believe Bible. Welcome back. Rachel Scribner, a 2019 graduate of the Walla Walla University Cinema, Religion, and Worldview Master's Program, has collaborated with Hope Channel and Dean of the Walla Walla University School of Theology, Carl Cosart, to create a television series about Jesus based on the Gospel of Mark. Much of the series was filmed on location in Israel, including Old Jerusalem, the Garden of Gethsemane, the Sea of Galilee reconstructed villages in Nazareth, and the Gollum Heights, and the ruins of Capernaum, known as Chorazin. Reliving Mark, Discovering Jesus in Israel is a six-part television program that premiered on Hope Channel on February 28th. It would also be available at relivingmark.com. There, you can also find free study guides for each episode, seven behind-the-scenes videos where Corsair shares stories and bonus footage from the crew's experience while filming in Israel, and a series of interviews with seminary professors about the Gospel of Mark. Scribner said of the project, Carl Corsart has been taking groups to Israel on tour, and he wanted to share some of the same archaeological sites and insights from the Bible with people who might not be able to travel to Israel. I hope that viewers can watch this series and learn more about what life was really like in Jesus' day and more about Jesus himself. I hope people can imagine the stories better after they see this program. You can also learn more about Relive and Mark on hopetv.org. In our final episode, we'll examine what happened to Jesus on that weekend he was crucified. I've come to Jerusalem to better understand who Jesus of Nazareth was by examining what scholars believe is the earliest account of his life, the Gospel of Mark. In seeking to answer these important questions, we'll learn more about the practice of crucifixion and ancient Jewish burial custom. And we'll also encounter some amazing archaeological discoveries that shed fascinating light on what happened to Jesus. 
People living in the remote Pacific nation of Kiribati are able to access health checkups and workshops through a new wellness hub run by Seventh-day Adventists. The Tarawa Wellness Hub on the main island of South Tarawa is being supported by the 10,000 Toes campaign, which launched in Kiribati on February 28th. The 10,000 Toes campaign is an initiative of Adventist Health at the South Pacific Division. The launch was attended by the country's Vice President, Dr. Tewawa Tuato, and his wife, Bruketa, and Kiribati Mission President, Pastor Tabao Roketao, with his wife, Raobi. Dr. Tuato was impressed with the Wellness Hub, which is run by 10,000 Toes Lead Ambassador, Tira Tarak Tak, with assistance from an enthusiastic team of health workers. After the launch, more than 50 people visited the center requesting health checkups and were introduced to the CHIP program. Like other Pacific nations, Kiribati is in the midst of a health crisis due to lifestyle diseases. According to 2019 health data, 81% of Kiribati's population is obese, with 36% not meeting the World Health Organization's recommended physical activity guidelines. 10,000 Toes Coordinator for the South Pacific, Pam Townen, said 30 screening kits have been sent to Kiribati as a result of generous donations to the 10,000 Toes campaign. Cooking with Kids by Curly Sue, or Suzanne Curlew, was presented with the prestigious Wise Woman Award on March 14 for Outstanding Christian Book of the Year. The book was published by Adventist Publishing House, Stanborough Press Limited, located in the United Kingdom. The Wise Woman Award ceremony has been a tradition within the UK for years and recognizes the contributions Christian women from across denominations in the UK, Europe, and the USA have made in the church and wider society. Curly Sue said, I thank God for this award. I am so pleased and feel so humble. Writing a book is no easy task and driving the sales is an even bigger task, but God has been with me and the Stanborough Press each step of the way. The award-winning book is a plant-based cookbook for parents and kids. The cookbook includes soups, salads, breakfasts, dinners, smoothies, and desserts. With stunning food photography and more than 75 individual recipes, Cooking with Kids reveals a glimpse into the inner workings of Curly Sue's TV shows and philosophies. There are updates of time-proven favorite recipes, inventive new ideas, and contemporary twists on some multi-ethnic dishes from around the world. To learn more, visit lifesourcebookshop.co.uk. In order to contribute to the professionals who are at the front lines in the fight against COVID-19, employees of the South American headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Brasilia and the Doutores de Esperanza, Doctors of Hope group, collected more than 5,000 equipment kits, PPEs, which were donated to the regional hospital of Asa Norte in Brasilia. The initiative, which took place on April 3, also included the distribution of Easter goodies to the hospital employees. The group sang songs, shared prayer and messages of comfort and encouragement. Each person who volunteered wrote a letter to healthcare professionals and patients. The director of the Adventist Solidarity Action, ASA, for eight South American countries, Herbert Boger, said the initiative was intended to bring hope in these challenging days. While the songs were sung outside, patients and staff appeared at the hospital windows and expressed gratitude through hand gestures. Head of Doctors of Hope, Thais Trivalto, said, we want to take something different. In addition to donations, a moment of prayer with staff and patients, a serenade at the window. This can bring a little relief for patients who are experiencing difficult moments during hospitalization. Coming up, Ashley Chisholm is here with This Week in Adventist History. But up next, in Puerto Rico, Adventists have created an urban center of influence where everyone is well. Are you okay? Dear VL, I can't even remember how long we've been staying at home now because of this virus. For now, <laughs> it's just nice to hear your voice and see your face. Nothing beats playing outside in the dirt though. Which reminds me. Are your hands clean? Yeah! Mommy and Daddy says not a lot of kids get COVID-19. But it's always nice to be extra safe. We should wash our hands before picking our nose. With the water 
Washing our hands protects us, but it also keeps us from spreading the virus. In case we touch something dirty, let's always be clean and safe, okay? Love, Joey. Welcome back. Students and faculty from Antillian Adventist University in Puerto Rico offer programs that promote healthy living. Through the Urban Center of Influence, they work to meet people's needs, conduct health fairs, give clothing to the needy, and pray with people. Adventist Mission has more. In Puerto Rico, Adventists have created a space where everyone is welcome. CentroCEF is an urban center of influence that was started to help people prioritize community, education, and family. Students and faculty from Antillian Adventist University offer programs that promote healthy living. We are here in the community near our center. We are conducting a survey about what the surrounding population needs, how we can impact them, and help them in different ways. We're giving them flyers about the services we offer. We pray with the person, talk to them, see how they are, and have a good interaction with them. They have met people's needs with activities like conducting health fairs, giving clothing to those who need it, and praying with people. At the UCI, children come to be tutored in subjects like English, Spanish, and math. We also have a school for parents where we learn about emotions, what good emotional intelligence is, and how to develop and practice it with their child. At the end of the center's first semester, families and volunteers enjoyed an end-of-year holiday program. During a large celebration with food and music, the children showcased their artwork and the staff handed out special gifts to community members. But as 2020 progressed, CentroCEF had to find new ways to operate. They experimented with hosting a podcast to discuss a variety of topics and promote the center's services. During the pandemic, the services needed to be adapted a little but we continued by doing online workshops for parents and art workshops for the kids. We also created a WhatsApp group where we send daily educational videos. Hola. Hello. My name is Jalis Bosquez. I'm part of the art group. I like it because I learn many things. We are really happy with the service we receive. It's been a big help to learn in the area of art, and it's been beneficial to my children, who have been quarantining and social distancing. We can't go out much, but these workshops are helping a lot, because the kids benefit, learn, and enjoy. This online shift allowed the volunteers to stay connected with people, even when they can't be together physically. They have developed an online group for women to interact and support each other. It helped me a lot. Many times we need support and others won't listen. And in my case, I have been living completely alone for three years. It's not easy. CentraCEF has done amazing things to impact this community in Puerto Rico. This quarter, a portion of your 13th Sabbath offering will help the efforts of this urban center of influence. We will continue working for the community, for the family, and for kids' education. We have other activities planned and things to do to impact everyone here. We hope to serve as a blessing for each of them in the midst of these difficult times. Thank you for supporting projects like this through the 13th Sabbath offering. 
watch this and other mission stories online by visiting AdventistMission.org. Then click on videos at the top. And finally, for today's episode, let's turn to Ashley Chisholm for a look at Adventist history. This week, we hear a poem from Annie Sufiko that was published in the Adventist Review. Welcome to This Week in Adventist History. This week, we focus on another unknown Adventist who was totally involved in the church's work. The April 4th, 1882 issue of the Review contains a poem written by Annie Suffolkul, who was born March 31st, 1845 in the U.S. state of New York. Suffolkul became a Seventh-day Adventist in 1877 and for 31 years did Bible work in Wisconsin, North Carolina, and Colorado. She died in Denver, Colorado on January 30th, 1932. Her poem from This Week in Adventist History, titled Consolation, reads, Oh, how sweet it is to ponder on the goodness of the Lord, and when earthly tumult vexes to find comfort in his word. In those holy sacred pages, we his promises can trace, how they cheer us to press forward when we weary, weary in the race. For our footsteps oft times falter, and we halt before the foe, till God's spirit rings within us, forward move, with courage go. But we plead, the path is thorny, Father, see the rugged way. I have trod the path before thee, seems a gentle voice to say. Child, take up thy cross and follow, all thy burdens on me cast. Come to me with all thy sorrow, and in me be fully blessed. In my Father's house are mansions, and a home of rest for thee. Weary not, I'll ne'er forsake thee, thou shalt sure victorious be. I will come again and take you to those mansions in the skies. There you'll meet no more temptations, no more tears bedim your eyes. Precious Savior, we are waiting, hoping soon thy voice to hear, for we see the signs fulfilling that proclaim thy advent near. Thus our hearts are filled with gladness, and we check the rising sigh, for we know our Lord is coming, our redemption draweth nigh. Thanks for watching ANN. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Did you know the Adventist Church has a YouTube channel where you can watch ANN video a in Death, and plenty of other amazing videos on prophecy, health, and Bible study. Just go to YouTube and search for The Adventist Church. Click on the subscribe button to make sure you're caught up each week. And remember, leave a comment or a prayer request. People are praying for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Before we say goodbye, here's some good news from the book of Hosea, chapter 14, verse 9. The passage says, Who is wise? Let them realize these things. Who is discerning? Let them understand. The ways of the Lord are right. The righteous walk in them, but the rebellious stumble in them. That's our program for this week. And remember, you can always visit Adventist.news for daily news and videos. Until next time, God bless. Take care.